Hey, what's up? My name is Hugo and I work with uh, Respectar. Today, I want to talk about how we can filter microplastic while washing your clothes. But before that, we really, really, really need to take the time to talk about the problem of microplastic as a whole to put things into perspective. I've been interested in this subject for many years, but all the blog posts I found about it were incomplete. Uh, either they were only talking about secondary microplastic or gave information only on only one source of primary microplastic. I could not find comprehensive information on the subject until I came across this wonderful IUCN report which summarizes several scientific studies. In this report, I learned about the data that I am going to share with you. So just click on the link in the description if you'd like to get all the information and know more about it. So what's a microplastic? A microplastic is a tiny piece of plastic that is invisible or so to the naked eye. There are two types of microplastic. Uh, primary microplastic, which are already small pieces when they enter and uh, contaminate the environment. For example, microbeads in a cosmetic product. Uh, we're going to uh, get back on primary uh, microplastic later. And secondary microplastic, which are uh, larger plastic debris that break into smaller pieces over time. So it can be water bottles, bags, straw, disposable packaging of all kind that will ultimately break into smaller pieces until it's almost invisible. So about 8 million tons of plastic waste end up in the ocean each year. To help reduce this source of microplastic, single-use plastic must be minimized. So we already know about that. Reusable bags for the grocery store, uh, reusable water bottle, uh, buy in bulk, avoid plastic straws, etc. etc. But what we don't know is that about 1.5 million ton of primary microplastic end up in the ocean each year. So again, these are tiny pieces of plastic that are already small when they enter the environment. So these microplastics come from different sources that might surprise you. So we have a plastic pellets incident uh, during manufacturing, recycling, or transport. And that is actually zero, it's estimated to be like 0.3% of all the primary microplastic in the ocean. So it's not that big of a deal. Then you have personal care product aka microbeads, which has been the most talked about source of microplastic. There's been a lot of information about it. There's been a lot of legislation about it. Now it's illegal in several countries, but it accounts for only 2% of all primary microplastics. Then we have marine coating, uh, I guess boat paint, um, or that kind of stuff, uh, which is 3.7%. Uh, so then at 7%, we have road markings. I guess there is plastic in the uh, paint that is used on the roads or uh, on any other uh, signalization. We have city dust, that is a category that brings together uh, nine different sources that are usually related to city life, including uh, kitchen utensils, shoe soles, uh, coating of houses, uh, artificial turfs, and many other uh, sources. So that's 24% uh, percent of all micro, uh, primary microplastics. Very surprisingly, uh, the second leading cause of primary microplastic is tire abrasion. So it's 28% of all primary microplastics. So it makes sense. About half the car tires are a synthetic rubber. So the tire wear out, the part that is no longer on the tire has to be somewhere, right? So it is uh, on the road and it's either blown away or washed away and it ends up in the ocean. And that is the second leading cause. And the first source is synthetic 
textiles. So that is the one that I am interested in. 60% of all clothes are made of synthetic fiber nowadays. And whenever these are washed or worn, uh, fiber come off and end up in the ocean ultimately. So what do we do to reduce the microplastic pollution uh, linked to our clothes? Uh, first of all, uh, avoid synthetic fibers, like the, uh, it sounds obvious, but it's not always easy. There are often fiber blends in fabrics and it's very rare nowadays to find clothes without spandex or sewn with a natural uh, sewing machine uh, thread. The second thing I would suggest is to avoid uh, synthetic fleece fabrics. So what is a fleece uh, fabric? It's a hoodie, it is a jogging pants, it is a sometimes like fall spring jackets. Uh, to obtain this texture, the fiber have been deliberately broken and this type of fabric will shed much more fiber than a t-shirt or a shirt, whatever. It's about 25 more than any other types of fabric. So avoid fleeces in synthetic fiber as much as possible. Next, you can try to wash less often if possible, but that's not always an option because clothes, when they aren't washed, stink. So you do have to wash your clothes eventually. And when you do wash your clothes, you can use this guy. So that is called the uh, Goopy Friend Bag. Uh, I would like to say thanks so much to my mother-in-law who gave this bag to me. So thank you, Marlene. So it's very easy to use. You just put all your clothes in the bag and you put the bag in the washer. And then when your uh, washing load is done, you just remove all your, all your clothes from the bag and then you'll see all the microfiber uh, stuck inside the bag, like right here. And uh, in addition to filtering microplastic, when you put your clothes in the bag, they'll actually shed less uh, fiber because there's not as much friction. So the bag filters about 90% of all fiber, which is a very good uh, percentage. Um, my only problem with it, it's made in China. I do not have, I don't have anything against that, but when I, you know, looked for uh, the bag uh, to buy it online. I could not find the country of origin, like nowhere. So I don't like that. I like to know where uh, the stuff I'm buying is made. And it's also kind of uh, ironic that this bag is made of synthetic fibers that are actually the fibers we're trying to use less uh, to prevent microplastics. But like, I understand that you need that to have smaller holes and filter uh, the microfibers. Uh, if you'd like to get one, I'll have a link in the description and you can buy it and filter microplastic and be awesome. The second thing you can do is use a coral ball. So uh, the coral ball is made by uh, scientists in Vermont who study the ocean and they were inspired by corals. Also, ironically, made of 100% plastic, but like the plastic is recycled, so that's a good thing. It is made in Vermont, so that's a good thing. It's very uh, local. But I must confess that I am a little bit disappointed by the performance of the coral ball, which should, uh, according to what I read, capture about 26% of all the fibers. I've used it like 15 to 20 times and I, I don't see anything in it. Like there's nothing in it. Uh, I only see hair. So that's, an, that's another thing that the coral ball does is it captures hair. So that's good. But I would like to see fibers like every now and then, which I never see. But uh, you should still give it a go because I think that my washer is not compatible with this and I haven't tried it in another washer. So try it and uh, let me know what you think. 
I'll also have the link in the description if you want to get one. Another thing you can do, which is a bit more complicated, is to use a system like the Filtrol 160, which will connect directly to your washer's water outlet to prevent skeptic tank problems. And it's going to filter out about 90% of all microplastics. I haven't never used it. So if you do use it, let me know uh, how is your experience. I also have the link in the description if you're interested. The last thing you could do is to contact washing machine manufacturers to show them that there is an interest in a machine that have built in microplastic filters. So like General Electric, uh, Kenmore, Maytag, Whirlpool, are a uh, huge um, washing machine manufacturer. So if they see that there is an interest in filtering out microplastic, well, they'll surely, I guess, build a washing machine with built-in filters to just, you know, grab that market. Thanks for watching, and I hope you are as concerned as me with microplastic pollution. It is a threat that uh, we never really talk about. And it is really something that is new because synthetic fibers really got the market uh, in the 90s or something. So it is a relatively new phenomenon and I think we have to deal with it like now.